and welcome to Eric's Fly Tying. My name is Wokan and today we will be tying a salmon fly, a classic pattern called the Ecroid. Uh, we will be using the uh, uh, HR 410, the size 2O. And we're starting at the back of the hook. The first part of the fly is the tag. And I'm using <clears throat> fine silver tinsel, oval silver tinsel for the tag. Tie in this piece and I tie it down along the shank, down the band to just above the hook bob. Go back with the thread and then we're making the tag with touching turn of this silver tinsel. On most of the classic salmon flies, there is a tag, and in most of the cases, it's both tinsel and floss in different colors. But this is just oval silver tinsel. Now we tie it in. The tail is made out of uh, oops, golden pheasant uh, topping, and uh, I've chosen topping that are quite straight in the shape. There can sometimes be a lot of curve in these feathers, but from this, for this slide I want quite straight one. So I tie it in just in front of the tinsel, but it stands up a bit too much for me. So I just go one or two turns back over the silver to make it lay down a bit more. And there is also call for a few fibers from the tippet feather. So I just cut off some fibers and tie it in just on top of the, tip, the topping. Like that. The body on the fly is divided in two sections. And the first section is Seals fur, yellow or golden yellow. This is actually a color called Irish golden olive, but it's perfect for this fly. Uh, and it also have uh, a sort of hackle, body hackle, which is just a standard yellow rooster hackle. But we start with the ribbing, which is also silver tinsel, oval silver tinsel, but this time it's uh, size small, slightly bigger. And next to the ribbing, I will tie in this hackle. Do it. I tie it in the top end of the feather, just next to the ribbing, because the hackle is supposed to follow the ribbing once it's wound on the on the fly. So just tie it down a bit. When the fly calls for two different sections of the body, it says it's split in two equal half. I will do the, the, the rear part slightly shorter because when the finished fly, uh, it, when it's ready, uh, some of the th throat hackle uh, often covers the front part. So if I do them exactly, 50-50. The front part will look shorter when the fly is finished, so I do it a bit shorter. Just dub the seal's fur. If you don't take too much on the thread, thread you don't need any wax. And then we just make a nice even body all the way back to the tail. And forward. We need a bit more. Uh, the front part of the fly is made of black floss. So I need to think about what and how I tie it in along the shank to make a smooth underbody for the floss. When I 
done the dubbing, I take the uh, silver tinsel and make uh, four turns and tie it in. But I don't cut off all just so it's out of the way because I will tie it along the shank once I've done the hacko. And the hacko is just wound touching the oval silver. As you can see, the fibers of the hackle is more or less the hook gape. And then we tie it in. And again, I don't cut it off, but I try to pull off, off some of the fibers because I will tie down the stem along with the, with the oval silver. So just tie them both down along the hook shank on the same side. And cut off. The front part will be ribbed with two different um, ribbing, ribs. Uh, the first one is the pattern calls for twist. This is called twist, but I would I would say it's more or less like a small lace of of tin. So anyway, I cut off a piece of that and tie it in back to the rear part. And the other uh, rib is just flat silver tin. So this is. A metal tinsel but if you want you can use an ordinary Mylar tinsel but that, that's optional. Just remember when tying with the metal tinsel that the cutoff edge is quite sharp so be careful. And then I tie it in just next to the first ribbing on the underside. And the front part of the body will also have a body hackle. The original calls for heron, long heron hackle, but I'm using ring neck hackle, which I've dyed black. And you can find feathers long enough to, to suit this size of fly. I tie it in by the tip, but just remember this is a quite, uh, it's easy to break the tip. So be careful when you when you wind it. So tie it in along the hook shank and cut it off. And now for the body material, I'm using a true silk, but you can use any other silk floss if you want. Just cut off a piece and wind it back to the rear part. Make sure there's no gap left between. And then forward again. Make it smooth body as possible. And tie it. And now for the first rib, which is the flat one. So I just make three turns and tie in. I just cut off some of it because if, if I break the hackle, it's easy to just unwind and, and use the rib again. And then I do the same with the twist, or shall we call it lace. Just follow the back edge of the flat silver. And the reason I'm using two, or the pattern calls for two, is that this round or olive oval tinsel will, will sort of uh, cover the hackle. It will protect the stem. 
So now align the hackle just behind the lace or twist. As close as it goes. And make sure I don't twist the feather. And tie in. As I said, this is a big hook. This is a 2-0. But you can see the ring neck is, is long enough for this fly. Now that I cut off the flat tinsel, I need to be careful so I don't cut out, cut off the thread. No, it worked. Then I try to pull down the fibers as much as possible. The black hackle. On, a, on an old classic D fly, the hackle would probably be all the way down here, but it, this works perfectly. Uh, there is a throat hackle, and I'm using Baron Feather, Widgeon is what it's called um, for, but uh, you can also use Teal or, or similar feather. And take off the waist. And I don't want both sides of the feather. So I will be stripping this side because as I will tie in the fly in the tip, this side of the shank will lay against the hook. So I pull off those fibers. So I just have one side left like this. And then I tie in the feather by the tip and make three turns, four. And tie. And then I try to separate the hackle on top of the fly and tie down the feathers, the fibers. Like that. The wing on most of the D flies is made of turkey, and most of them are of cinnamon turkey. It's quite difficult to find it nowadays, but you can you can dye a white feather as I've done here to make it in a nice cinnamon shade. So I cut out two strips. I think this was too heavy. So we just pull off, pull off two fibers. This is good enough. And the wing should reach just behind the hook band or a couple of millimeters after. Uh, and we take a strip from the other side. Make sure they are equal. This was also a bit too wide. Yep, that will work. The traditional way to tie this, tie in this wing was was supposed to lay flat over the fly. But when I do these fishing flies, I want the wing to sort of sit more or less on the side of the hook. I tie them in one at a time. Start with the one on my side. Just carefully make sure it doesn't fold or roll over. That looks nice. And I try to tie in the other slip touching each other on top of the fly, making them equal. This is too long, but maybe with a little bit. Yeah. And I tie them in so they are separated. Like this. And secure. And cut off the waist.
And the final thing to tie in on the fly, which is optional if you don't want to do it, is sides of jungle cook. But instead of tying in them alongside the wing, on D flies, the feathers are tied in, dropped or dropping as it says. So instead of tying them in next to the wing, we will be tying the feathers on the underside, like this. And if you, if you have a cape, you, you could take one feather from this side or one from that side, because then they have sort of a, a shape that will follow the hackle of the fly. They are slightly longer than they normally are when you tie in sides on a classic fly. So just tie it in, following the hackle. Yeah, that's nice. And do the same on the other side. Just pull a bit. Yep. That works. And then we just cut off the stem and make a neat head. And then we just make a whip finish. And varnish the head. And you will probably need to, to make a couple of layers of varnish, but make sure that it dries between every layer of varnish. And then you will end up with a nice shiny black head on the fly. And then we have a nice fishing fly, classic acroid, with a bit of a modern touch. <laughs> 